Howie! Howie! What are you doing? You can't stop big sales! Guy made me cancel my guest today. Don't worry. We got Steve Tasker tomorrow to talk about my boy, Josh Allen. Damn. That's right, Flexion. Let's go. I got a ton of people on my Twitter page going, what the F is going on? I'm with you guys, man. Appreciate you guys hanging tough. Thank you so much, man. And believe me, we've been, Xander and I have been going like, what in the world? The entire world has relied on StreamYard to get these shows going. And we thank you guys so much for coming aboard here, man. Thank you guys for hanging in there. I appreciate it. 15 days until the NFL draft. Okay. Hey, my blood pressure is back. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, this is all I got to tell you. Sao Paulo, September 6th. This will be the beginning of the end for little Pinocchio Sirianni. Pinocchio, come out and play. Pinocchio, come out and play. (laughs) Oh, my God. You get the Packers, who are better than you. Holy cow. If I had to start my football team right now with someone, I'd start it with Jordan Love over Jalen Hurts any day. You know why? Because he's actually going to get good coaching. I I give you this with the Eagles. They're going to put and take swings to help that guy as much as they can, except when it comes to coaching. You know why? They're afraid to hire a guy like Matt LaFleur. Too much control. I wonder if they'll ever hire a play-calling head football coach ever again, Philadelphia. I wonder if they ever will, because that's too much power for the head coach. Would they ever hire a play-calling head coach like Andy Reid ever again? I don't know. Or Doug Peterson. Anti-Hurts again? No, I'm anti-bad. The Packers are going to wipe the floor with you on September 6th. You don't believe in more? Not really. He hasn't done anything. What's he done in the postseason? He was Dak Prescott's offensive coordinator, who you guys say sucks. All of a sudden now he's spectacular. All of a sudden now he's wonderful. Really? Okay. Nick Sirianni is an offensive mind. That's why he was fired when he was two and five from being the play caller. You still can't get over that shit. The, the Packers are trending up. The Eagles are trending down. Anthony says the Eagles are winning that Brazil game. I ain't worried. Really? Why would you say you're winning that football game when you're not good at the quarterback or head coach and your defense is not better than Green Bay's defense? Your defense is not better than Green Bay's defense. It's not. Why do you say that? You were one of the worst secondaries in the National Football League. And you're going to be going against, and by the way, I'll put this out there. I think Josh Jacobs has a better game in that September 6th game than what Saquon Barkley will. You know why? You can't stop the run. How you doing? Yes, sir. (laughs) Holy cow. I couldn't have asked for a better start to the season than the Green Bay Packers, who are a better roster than you. You got a better offense, but they got a better team. Okay? Hey, you might want to leave old Nicky. Oh, by the way, Nick, if I were you, I wouldn't be screaming at too many fans in Sao Paulo. 
They may have your ass on a skewer down there. <laughs> they may put your ass on a skewer. That's not a friendly place to be screaming at the fans. I'd like to see you scream screaming at those Brazilians. Let's see what they do to you there, kid. <laughs> be like, who's this guy? <laughs> Someone's going to go dinner. <laughs> Dinner. How you doing? Sills, you can hire any head coach you want that is not currently a head coach in the NFL. Who are you hiring? Great question. Sills, you can hire any head coach you want that is not currently a head coach in the NFL. Who are you hiring? You know, I don't want to I I want to get into today's NFL and I don't know Mike Vrabel's in today's NFL. It's a great question. Twiz is talking about the uh, offensive coordinator in Houston. Or the offensive coordinator in Detroit also is a, is a good thought. And he said guys that are not coaching right now. You know, I thought Vrabel and Belichick would be great, but you got to have a play calling head coach. Here, here, Bob, so you know, I want my offense and defensive coaching staff to resemble what Kansas City's doing. I want a head coach that's a play calling head coach, and I want a defensive minded guy. Kind of the same thing they do in Los Angeles with the Rams. I want that dynamic. Okay, I, I want that dynamic. Okay, last time the Eagles won a Super Bowl, Meek Mill wasn't on audio getting his back blown out by <laughs> Ted Taz. Please, I just did a Rod Burgundy. I just did two seconds of my life. I wish I got back. Holy cow! Give me a break. So, Sao Paulo. That'll be the beginning of the end. Taz, let me down to, let me into the gutter. Urban and Dak together would be a, <laughs> who would I want as my head coach? That's not currently a coach in the league. I might give Kingsbury an opportunity. I might give him an opportunity. Um, he has to be a play caller. He has to be a play caller. I know Philly 500 must be moaning. Josh Allen, five years, $150 million, 88 guaranteed. How you doing? I told you that guy was never leaving Jacksonville. The guy that you're potentially going to be landing on if there is a deal, is going to be Patrick Sertan, okay? It's going to be Patrick Sertan. I just, if there's going to be a deal, it's going to be that. While well, yesterday, Big Sill said Bill was doing coke with, I never said Bill Belichick was doing coke with Lawrence Taylor, you dickhead. I never said that. What a liar. Completely. I mean, even LJ doesn't lie like you. Bill Belichick, I said, was doing blow. Right. Okay. He must have been doing it with your mom. <laughs> yeah. Let me get to a happier thing. Hey, me and mom were doing blow with LT in his, at, at, at his restaurant in the upstairs area. Mom. Mom, you should have seen my mom and Lawrence Taylor. With those rails they were doing. Woo! Man, you talk about a train ride. Mom was on it. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I meant the rails. <laughs> not, 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 not. I, I, I meant coke, you know, rails, you know, lines. <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know, what I heard. I don't know. 
Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Fletcher Cox, congratulations. That was a heck of a um, press conference, man. Really cool. Brought the entire family. He got his own day. He talked about playing in Philly. Consummate pro. He's not a Hall of Famer. He's hoping he ends up getting an opportunity to be. But I got to tell you, man, let me say this to you. I, I started doing some due diligence on the guy. And I'll be asked. And here's here's Fletcher Cox. Six Pro Bowls. One All-Pro, All-Decade team. Won a Super Bowl. He checks a lot of the boxes. And if Adam Kasu gets in, you got to put him in. So if Adam Kasu gets into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Fletcher Cox may get a gold jacket and not just an eagle jacket. He may get a gold jacket. Okay? He may. I don't think he is. But six Pro Bowls is awful good. Is is awful good. Bryant Young, if I'm not mistaken, he may have less. And the guy who just got on the Veterans Committee, um, who just went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Alex Karras, I think may have less. So Fletcher could be right there. Fletcher could be right there, man. He could be. As much as Sills calls these dudes dickheads, I'm thinking he's. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. That's actually a compliment. So, Sills, what's the update on Sertan? I don't have anything yet. I think they're going to wait around draft time. I do. I give it to Cox. Hey, Steve, I think he's really close. Okay. Flexing, Italian festival. What's the Italian festival like in Philly? What's the Italian festival like in Philly? I've never been. I've been to the one in New York, New Jersey. I've been to one in Boston. I've been to one in San Francisco. And of course, I've been to the one in San Diego. Um, I've not, I'd love to go to that Philly Italian festival. Italian ice. Holy shit. The Gabagool. The Pizza Fleet. The Galamad. Oh, man. Right? That thing must be great. It's at the Italian market. Man, can you imagine what the prosciutto tastes like down there? Holy cow. Man. Right? Funnel cake. Absolutely, man. That must be. Hey, how many people have been to that? To the Italian uh, festival in Philly? I'd love to go to that. I really do. Dan, there's a better chance of a leprechaun popping out of your lucky charms and Sertan being traded. I wouldn't say that, dude. Absolutely not. Because you being a Cowboy fan and you're stuck there with Micah Parsons, the most difficult player to coach in the NFL because he's a moaner and a whiner. I wouldn't want that guy on my football team or in my locker room. You know why? He's a bitch. Okay, man, you know, let me go to my podcast. Let me tell everybody what's wrong with the Cowboys. Hey, dude, play. Shut up. Get your money. You're the Dallas Cowboys. And if you were anywhere else, nobody would know your name. Because you're not. You, you, know, you know what happened? Let me tell you what happened to Michael Parsons. This is a prime example of the media blowing somebody up. This guy's the next LT. And you're like, pump the brakes. He's not. Oh, my God. He's the next Lord's Taylor. And when he doesn't fulfill that, you think he sucks. Me? I never thought he was. I thought he was a really good player. And he is. Lawrence Taylor? That might not be. The two, look, it's LT and Reggie and every other defender that's ever played. It's Reggie and now you know what I heard Bayless say, which is absurd. He said that the Dallas Cowboys nullified Reggie White. That couldn't be a bigger lie than anybody has ever said about Reggie White. Nobody blocked that guy. What a what a what an absolute honk for that team. Nobody blocked him. 
You game planned around him. You're crazy. Nobody. By the way, I had to cancel some guests because of this stupid ass stream yard shit. So we're going to get Steve Tasker on tomorrow. How about this? Steve Tasker, we'll talk a little uh, bills with him. Seven time pro bowler, five time first team all pro. Devin Hesker can get into the Hall of Fame. Maybe Steve Tasker will get in too. He works on the broadcast team for the Bills. So we'll talk to him. That'll be at 3.30 tomorrow. So we're just glad that we got this bad puppy back up and running. Seals, you're open with trading AJ and taking the cap. It might be in play. How he has a lot of money still sitting to absorb the hit. Correct. Correct. I, I Dude. I would trade that guy on, tra- on on draft day. Okay? Eric Williams, T-bagged Reggie White. Where's where's Eric Williams? Sorry, I must have missed that Hall of Fame induction. Micah Parsons, um, <laughs> old Duel's version of LT. Even LT would go, I don't drink near beer, dude. <laughs> hey, hey, Dirty D, did you see what Lawrence Taylor said when he went to a Cowboys and Giants game? You hear what he said when he walked off the field? Well, I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about someone saying who someone's better than me, man. We're all good. Well, that was taken care of. Something shit like that, he said. Well, I got my answer. (laughs) That ain't Lawrence Taylor, dude. (laughs) Lawrence Taylor was different. Reggie's different. To some extent, Ray Lewis is different. Ed Reed's different. Michael Parsons, you know what he is? He's Spider Rico compared to LT. Who'd you fight? Michael Parsons. <laughs> He's a bum. Who'd he beat? He went around the horn on the New York Giants offensive tackle. What was the offensive tackle's name? Spider Rico. He's a bum. <laughs> oh, man. He's a bum. Please, Cowboys, extend Parsons. You know why Niner guy wants that? So Trent Williams continue to run his ass over. <laughs> hey, William, he's compared to Lawrence Taylor. Micah Parsons is Spider Rico. Seals, the only guy I would say is close to it was Derek Thomas. Wow, what a great player. Kyle, phenomenal. Phenomenal take. Phenomenal. Derek Thomas was special. I watched him get nine sacks in one game. I think it was against the Seahawks or the Raiders. <laughs> guy was stupid good, man. He, he was just stupid good. Oh, is LJ or anybody in here? I would like to ask a question. Eagle fans, Jet fans, NFL fans. Where's Hassan Reddick's contract extension with the Jets? Where's his contract extension? Every day that goes by, that deal looks weirder. Where's the contract extension? Every guy. Senor, think about this. Every guy who was traded, something happened. Like here, even the Stefan Diggs, they voided the last two years. You know, Diggs can look at it this way. All right, I go in there, get 1,400 yards. I go in the open market, probably get a good contract, like 16, 17, 18 million dollars next year. Okay. Joe Mixon got a three year contract extension with the Texans. Snead got paid the highest paid secondary guy in the league. I mean, when they made it, when they signed Patrick Queen, he got a three or $18 million deal. Where's Hassan Reddick's deal? What happened? So you're telling me the Jets are going to have him on a one-year rental and they got the better player, they're going to let him walk or maybe even trade him on draft day. 
What if they trade him on draft day? They trade him and they sign Verse and they end up getting a second and third for him when Howie got potentially a second three drafts from now. This is, where's his contract extension? The Jets aren't even giving him money. Why didn't the Eagles keep him on the team? I ask you this question again. That is a failure by your GM of epic proportion. And some of you are going to go, Seals, you're all in favor of moving him. Yeah, to upgrade the position, if you want to move him, get a better player. They didn't. They got a lesser player. That's a failure. The Jets did not, they're not rushing to any money. They didn't even up his pay. Do you understand what happened here? They basically got the Eagles' best defensive player on the last year of his contract at the same price. And they don't have to cough up any equity until three years from now. I heard this segment. Okay, no, no. Prince, I'm asking you, here we are again. Kyle, no, 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 Kyle. Here, here, here's the thing, Kyle. Here, here's the thing, okay? One thing that I'll say, and, and Fangio wanted him out. Well, that was my contention, that he knew he wasn't going to um, in any way whatsoever. He wasn't going to play with that guy in his defense. And you know what I got to ask you guys? When he was the consultant for the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl year, it was him that wanted to drop Hassan Reddick into coverage. Personally, I don't believe, get this, that Reddick wanted to play for Fangio. Reddick might play for his current deal for the Jets, but there was no chance he was playing in Philly, making less than what Huff was. Exactly. Dirty D. I've got to start wondering if Hassan must have said something to his agent that he doesn't want to play for Fangio because Fangio wants to drop him into coverage. And Fangio said, fine. And that's why they signed Huff. Because the, he'd rather play in New York on the money he's making than play for Nick. That's what this comes out to now. Do you guys agree? LJ, even you have to agree to this. I don't want to play for Vic Fangio. You know why? He's paying... For, He's playing for the same deal with the Jets. He'd rather play on the same deal for someone else. I think Vic, not Nick. I think it's Vic he didn't want to play for. Steve, you agree? And I think that's why this deal looks so weird. Because there's nothing on the contract. There's not even conversations of an extension or the Jets are working with him. They're having conversations. Now, that may happen tomorrow, but usually because the agents have such big mouths nowadays, I personally, I think that this came down to this. Now, I would also say that this probably comes down to Hassan Reddick being a malcontent in the locker room here. We don't know that, though. So much time left to get an extension. No, dude. The the Eagles made it clear they're working on a contract extension for Devontae Smith. They never at any time said that they were working on a contract extension for Hassan Reddick. Never. As a matter of fact, I told you they never offered him one, which is true now. And the Jets are not working on a deal. It just like 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 Prince says it just makes sense. By the way, I appreciate the super chats. Thank you. I have to bring that up every single day now because the more that goes on, the more it's clear Hassan didn't want to play for Vic. Okay? He didn't want to play for him. This is Reddick's fourth team now. I completely get that. 
we couldn't pay Smith and Reddick. I don't know, man. Those salary caps, one thing how he does spectacular is work those contracts. Haas, Haas didn't want to adapt his game. He's gone. You hate on AJ for being a diva. Wear that same energy for Reddick. Well, I also want AJ gone. I wasn't against the trade. I was against what they did with Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff is a dumb move. You're hoping he's Hassan Reddick for a little bit more money. They insulted the player. Well, I'll say this to you. The way you treated Hassan Reddick since last year and the guy had given you 27 sacks, I think you took a shit on a guy who was completely uh, productive for you. You took a shit on him. The Eagles aren't taking shits on A.J. Brown. They give him what he wants. They didn't give him anything he wanted. They completely took a dump on Hassan Reddick. You want everyone gone. That's the problem. Everyone on defense should be gone because they suck. The only people I would keep would be Sweat and Jalen Carter. The rest of them, you can have them. There's only two players on defense I give a shit about. The rest of them are bums. Nobody I'd want on my team. They're not good enough. I don't care what kind of combines they had. It's not a good group. If Howie loses a trade, I'm glad it's to Douglas. Yeah, because the Jets won't do shit with it anyway. Milton Williams is good. He is, you know, he's a guy I would keep. Okay? He's a guy, you're right. Nick, Milton Williams is a guy. I'm, I'm going to get to the topics here in a minute. Nolan Smith needs coaching. Nolan Smith needs some sand or some cement in his ass. Guy's a little tiny. I like them tiny guys in Philly. It's a small defense. Well, it's good thing you aren't a coach. Stick to the media. Hey, Paris, you ain't got a redeeming guy on that defense that's worth a shit. And your results proved it last year in the last seven games. You got ran over like you were a cockroach in the street. 138 yards rushing and the worst pass defense in the league. It's a good thing you're not a media guy because you wouldn't know what the fuck you're talking about. Who are you kidding, guy? Milton Williams in the first round for Patrick Sertain. Not good enough. They want the draft equity. Big Seal speaking the truth again. Thank you, my friend. Okay? Don't trigger Seals. He's just like the other nerdy media guys. No, the other uh, nerdy media guys, they hold seances and victory parties and um, sociology classes in afternoons for guys with headaches and meatheads like A.J. Brown. You are why? Is everything okay? I don't give a shit if you're all right. I don't give a shit if it's pressure's getting to you. I don't give a shit. Go play some ball, kid. You make $25 million. And if you're going to cry, I don't care. I don't care. I pay you to play. I'm not your mom, your dad, or your psychologist. Go play some football, kid. Well, they're treating me bad. The Philly media is so awful. The fans take a crap on all of us. Shut up. Go play. Be quiet. Be quiet. Bag up. Okay, just bag up. Paris goes like this. Did I make you mad? No, you have to understand something first and foremost. Paris, you must be new to uh, big sales here. Here's something you always have to remember. The only people that upset me are people that I respect. How in the world could you upset me? I don't know you. How could you make me upset? I don't get upset over people I don't know or I don't respect. How in the world would I get upset with that? Come on, man. Bag up. <laughs> Prince, our defense sucks, guys. Are you guys blind? If we had a defense last season, things would have been different. True. May have made it to the NFC Championship game, Prince. That's why we lost to weaker teams. Prince, your offense is why you 
Hey, Prince, is this fair? The reason you beat good teams is because your offense. And the reason, like you just said, that you lost to lesser teams is your defense. Correct? Do you agree with that? Right? Um, so you don't respect anyone in the chat then? No, I respect people that come here each and every single day and spend their time out of their day and that are here all the time for us. I respect. So let me ask you something here. It's funny you say that, Marcus. So you respect somebody in Brazil you've never met or know? How would you know to respect them and what kind of person they are until you meet them and find out what kind of man or woman they are? So you just take the word of others and the word of mouth of what someone says about someone and then you quantify how you look at people? That's how you do things? Well, I don't do it that way. You and me, if we're talking, Marcus, on a daily basis, you and I get to know one another a little more. Okay? Our offense fell apart as well as sucked all the way around in 17. <laughs> Dumb as a can of paint. <laughs> uh, Sills, you're telling me how he doesn't know that we need better defense? Come on. Well, okay, Marcus. So you think he's addressed it? You think he's addressed it? I don't. Thank you very much, Ultra. Very cool. That I respect. Okay? And by the way, Marcus said something in here. I tell you guys more about me and my personal beliefs than I ever have in my 34 years of radio. I never told anybody about my failures in the NFL. I, I've told only you this. It's a tight niche community that comes here every day and spends your day and that's what I respect. Sales, what do you think of the Jags and Josh Allen contract? Signed a great player. Signed a great player. Five-star, what up, my friend? Another guy we love. I even love Dick Train. I even love Dick Train. Kidding me? Come on, Dick Train. There you go. Sales, Sales you would all respect me. Hey, Dick Train. If he dies, he dies. If he dies, he dies. Flex and I know Xander's probably going to go like this. Okay, we got a marshmallow coming in the room. Relax. Okay, we got to we got to move out of that because I don't want to get too. I don't I don't want to go over there over the top. So look at Prince. Okay, stop going soft here. We give each other shit cells. But you're definitely cut from the same cloth. Salute. Salute. Salute, Shindan. Sills of Brown traded. Would you jump for Odunza? I like that guy, Neighbor. But Odunza, I think, is a great player, too. Sills, over the past 12 years, only two Super Bowl winners have had a top 10 wide receiver over the same period. The winning defense was ranked fifth on an average. Offense gets you to the playoffs, but defense wins. Isn't that funny? Even in baseball, Bob, starting pitching and defense win World Series. Hey, Phillies, not souvenirs. That's the one thing that Dave Dombrowski knows himself. Those Marlin teams that he built, he built with starting pitching and defense. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. The fat overweight third baseman who turned out to be one of the greatest right-hand hitters since Henry Aaron. Okay? I mean, guy won a triple crown. And the media in Miami was calling him fat and lazy. And I'm like, if you think that guy's fat and lazy, I'll take 10 of those guys. Then they traded him to Detroit. Okay? I would love to really know what what Xander thinks of you and your shitty takes on the Eagles. Swansky, I'll, here, I'll just make it simple. They gave me an extra hour. I don't know. 
See, when you suck, Swansky, like your Eagles did in the last seven games, you take power away from your head coach. You don't give him more. Okay? You don't give him more. Miguel Cabrera's is totally a hall of he's the best right hand hitter we've seen in baseball. Swainsky, or whatever his name was. Okay. <laughs> Swallow. <laughs> All I know is I got an extra hour. Seals, what's your favorite Italian dish? Scoongeal. A scoongeal. Little galamad on the plate. And a nice lobster. Scoongeal, lobster, some galamad, and I'm good to go. See, you white folks don't know what scoongeal is. And when I say galamad, this is code for all you white guys. Calamaris. <laughs> Fried calamaris. Marcus, I'm from CT, brother. Okay. Still swallows. I swallow my pride sometimes. Unfortunately, some people in here can't swallow what I say when it comes to your meltdown. Would you trade to Denver on the draft a draft night for Sertain? Yeah, I would. I know, Nick. It's all good. <laughs> oh, he said. <laughs> all right. Let me get. I even got to the holy cow. We're, oh, all right. We're going to continue this bad puppy. We're not taking the time out right now. That's not happening, Xander. Okay, I got to get to the topics. Got to get, We had to get this thing rolling here. So let's get it going here, okay? I can't swallow that projected six games. Hey, Steve, well, I gave you seven. I think you're going to – I think you – I. Sill said white folks. Oh, my God. No. No, not white folks. <laughs> well, if you want to be put to sleep, go listen to WIP or the Fanatic. I, I call that lullaby music. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I shouldn't be saying that. Okay? I should be saying that. But if you want to be put to sleep, it's like elevator music. <laughs> How are you feeling? Is everything okay? Are you all right? Oh, uh, let me, hey, okay. Let me, <laughs> let me see what Swansky says. Let's see here. And if you say the Cowboys explain that freaking take, they lost just as many people as we did last year. And they beat the piss out of you. Dick train. Says I'm a liar. I would never believe from his horrible takes. He's jealous of the Eagles. Great organization. Your organization gets in its own way. That's why you haven't won multiple championships. And everyone knows it. Your general manager is a whore for power. Instead of letting people do their jobs, he can't. Because you know why? He's insecure about being put back into the broom closet again. How he doesn't want to be put back in the broom closet. Only taken out when they need a cap. Problem solved. I think Zimmer will light a fire under Micah's butt. Well, Mike Zimmer's, he's a little different than Dan Quinn. Play him off the ball. Uh, let me see him. Play him off the ball because he sucks against the run at defensive end. He jumps gaps and over pursues. It's a great – he does. He runs around blocks. That's why he's out of position in the run game. And he, as good an athlete as he is, he's not Junior Seau. You know what made Junior Seau so spectacular and also awful? Ask Rodney Harrison. Junior Seau used to jump – defensive schemes and do whatever he wanted, but he was so gifted physically, he could make up for his mistakes with his athleticism. That's what made him insane. 
seven in the first 10, Sills, new favorite meal going to be crow. Like it was last year? You'll never make it to the Super Bowl. You won't even make it to an NFC title game. Year before that, I said you made it to the Super Bowl. And you think Jalen Hurts is going to have a comeback year because of why? What leads you to believe that? What leads you to believe that? He's not that good. He's just not that good. Here, let me let me say this to you too about the contract extension with Devontae Smith. How could let me ask let me ask everyone in here this question about the contract extension. Okay? What leads me to believe he doesn't? That he not been consistent yet since he's been a Philadelphia Eagle. The one thing that he's been consistent on is not being consistent. First year, second year, third year, all three different guys. Wishful thinking. Let's see it. I don't believe it. I don't think he's good enough. Not the way they're coaching him. I just don't think he's good enough. He had one bad season, and he had one good season. That's inconsistency. That's not consistent football. And when you're considered one of – hey, do you want to hear something crazy about Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins in the last decade is third in touchdown passes, and he's second in yardage, and he's seventh in wins. Think about that. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, who nobody would ever say, let me build my team around that guy. Kirk Cousins. Jalen Hurts, he'll never have a career stat line like that guy, ever. Shit, Donovan McNabb doesn't. Okay? Cousins is a loser. No, well, your guy's two and three in the postseason, too. Not like he's some sort of superstar winner like Garoppolo or Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's five and two. Let me see. One, two... One, two, and then one, he's four, he's four and two. He's four and two in the postseason, two years starting. How you doing? Brock Purdy's four and two. Who's better, Hurts or Purdy? There's your comparison. Brock Purdy's better. According to you guys, one year wonder. Hey, hey, Niner all day. Isn't it funny how the Eagle guys look at Purdy and say he sucks when he's got the same talent around him that he does, and yet he wins more? How funny is that? Right? Hurts and Sirianni stink. Doomed. Yeah. Hey, Sirianni and Kyle Shanahan? I don't know. I might like that. Okay, I might like that. Both didn't get it done. Then what are you rooting on? Why would you say he's better? Why would you say he's better? Let me get to, I want to get to the topics here. I I do. I want to get to the topics here. Seals, before the Eagles should get Smitty signed, Jefferson, Waddle, and Chase, it will save them millions. Yeah, kind of what they did with Hurts. Well, let me ask you this. If you're Devontae Smith. Xander, I think this this is where we're going to go with this one too. So if you're Devontae Smith and you're the agent, is Philly the right place for him? Or would you rather play in Buffalo? Pretty QBR is insane. Better than Mahomes and Young. Yeah, but the guys in Philly will tell you that Hurts is better and he's not. Or would you rather play in Cincinnati when they get rid of T. Higgins? Or would you rather play Kansas City with Andy? 
I'd rather play in Buffalo. Are you crazy? Need a passing quarterback for a top tier wide receiver status. You want to hear something crazy? Jalen Hurts is not considered a top tier passer. And you got top tier wide receivers. And he can't throw for four grand. I've never seen any. Kirk Cousins throws for four grand, and you guys call them losers. And he's got Justin Jefferson. Why can't Hertz do that? Because he's not good enough. He's not good enough. What would here? Let's 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 ask you this. Hey Joseph, what do you think Devontae Smith's number would be? If he was in Cincinnati, how about this, Arthur? What would Devonte Smith's numbers be if he had Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, and he was the number one guy? Hundred catches, fifteen hundred yards, ten touchdowns. I mean. You want to hear something? Brock Purdy threw 70 less passes than Hurts and had the third most passing yards in the league. And you're going to try to tell me that that guy who's as stiff as a passer is better than Brock Purdy. And I think Purdy still got something to prove to me. How do you think that? He played all 17 games and still could. He's got to be the only quarterback that you call elite And he's in the same category with Lamar Jackson who can't throw for four grand in a passing league. What was AJ and Smitty under Shane? Um, That was the year that no one knew what they were looking at with Hurts. Now they know. And by the way, Prince, that was a different Jalen Hurts. RPO time of possession enhances defense. Once again, Prince, you're not, I don't believe they're going back to 22. Just like they didn't go back to 17 with Wentz. I do not believe that. If they were trying to grow what they did in 2022, then I would have a different conversation here and a different outlook. I totally would. But if you're Devontae Smith, is Jalen Hurts the quarterback that you want? Throwing you passes. If you're Justin Jefferson, aren't you waiting to see what the Minnesota Vikings do? J.J. McCarthy? You give me $30 million, and you that means I stayed in purgatory because I took the money. Okay, well, guess what? You're going to go down like Randy Moss and T.O., never winning a Super Bowl. If that's okay with you, fine. Okay, but you guys told me you have to win the chip. And look, look at Anthony. Purdy ain't better than Hurts. Get your eyes checked. What does he do better? Run? Well, they don't do that anymore. He doesn't throw the ball better. Completion percentage is better. His win total is better. His win percentage is better. His completion percentage is better. He's thrown for four grand. He's thrown for 30 touchdowns and less attempts than Hurts. What does he do better than Brock Purdy? Tell me, what does he do better? And like I said, I still think Brock Purdy's got to show me more. What does he do better? Look at that. Barb's right. The only thing he does better is make more money. That's it. Before paying Smith. Here, here's the thing with Smith. You got to figure this out with Devontae here. You really do. Hey, Devontae, if I give the Eagles this deal, are they going to continue to fuck this thing up with Jalen Hurts? And do I want to be here? I don't know. How many bad coaching hires are they going to make? No, my point is that all the top players you mentioned, have something in common. They had top OC or play caller. 
Jalen had that in 22, to be fair. Prince is right. Thank you for the super chat. But Prince, the philosophical way they used him was also right. The way they used him in 23, hey, Prince, do you agree? If they used Jalen Hurts like they did in 23, like they did in 22, the Eagles may have made it back to the NFC title game. God knows what could have happened. Don't you agree? You had the same talent. You had the same talent. And you had a, you had a running back that had nearly 1,100 yards also. Wasn't like you had a downgrade there. Everybody had career years. Don't you think if they used them the same way, defense would have been on the field longer. You would have had more 14-play drives. Hey, that's right. James is right. Brock Purdy makes $837,000 a year, and he's done more in his two years and what Hurts did in his first two years, by far. It's not close. And he got the same talent. Not quite the old line Hurts has. Facts. I'd like Hurts to be better than 22, not just match it. Yeah, but Barb, if you match it, at least you're going to get your team in a position where you're going to win more ball games down the stretch. And, hey, and uh, Tapeworm says the Niners have a great defense. Okay? If you're Devontae Smith, you want to be on a football team to get a lot of yards and not go anywhere? Um, let's see here. So that's more of a problem. Hurts playing more like 22 or fixing the defense. I think that's both. You're going to get, dude, you guys know for a fact that in the hiring of Kellen Moore, they're not getting closer to 22. They're going to try to redefine 23. They did the same thing to Carson Wentz. It's being played out again for you. Okay. This, this contract extension with, with Devontae Smith, I wouldn't sign it. I wouldn't sign it. Now, May 2nd's coming around the corner here. They're probably going to have – I would say, hey, I'll take the uh, fifth year. I wouldn't sign it. I want to see how this thing's going to – don't you – if you're if you're Devontae Smith and the agent, don't you want to see how this plays out? How do you know he doesn't want to go down and play in Carolina with Bryce Young or down with Miami and Tucker Viola? Once they move up, once once they realize that they're not going to pay Tyree Kill anymore, how do you know he doesn't want to do that and go down to the South and go back home, or go to New Orleans? How do you know he doesn't want to do that? I want to see how this plays out. He, to my opinion, I think he's got leverage. Of course, then he has to play on his fifth year option. Okay. Hey, that's 18 million bucks. You okay with that? So get this. And Xander's right. So that's an $18 million option that he'd play on. Well, if he signs a hometown discount, if he signs now before Jefferson and CD Lamb, what are we looking at here? 22 million? So you mean to tell me I'm going to tie myself up for the next three years, undervalue myself. And CD and Jefferson are going to sign for twenty-six to thirty million dollars, and I signed a contract ahead of time for twenty-two million. That would mean over the next three years, I would lose twenty-four million dollars. You want to do that? And you don't know if Hertz is on the team in three years, or the who the head coach is. And, and Barb's right. Building a team around a wideout, you don't build from the perimeter in. You build from the inside out. Give him the money? Why in the world would I sign when I don't know what that money is? You got to remember something here. If you're Devontae Smith, how, here, let's do this. How much money do you think Justin Jefferson's going to get in Minnesota? If he signs a three-year contract extension or five years, whatever. Okay. 
Aaron goes like this. This guy's a complete asshole. You know why? Unfortunately, Aaron, the NFL are complete assholes. And you're not used to that. You're used to being told lies. And you like to hear nice things. Well, when you're being dealt with as a player in the league, by ownership and by general managers, it's not a friendly conversation, son. And when you're coached by your coach and you're fucking up, no one talks to you and patting you on the head when shit goes sideways. Okay? Nobody does. The only place that's done is in the normal media now or with people who can't take the truth. Who would rather be lied to? Okay? I would make a recommendation to you. or And Aaron, I... Okay? Here's the thing, Aaron. And I'm not picking on you, Aaron. I'm saying this to you. A lot of people should go watch MSNBC. Because they'll tell you anything. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Okay? They will. They'll say anything they want. None of it's true, but they'll say whatever. Okay? Hey, I don't like... Aaron, I'm not, I'm not picking on you, bro. I'm not. Okay? I'm not. I'm not. Okay? Dude, $60 million for Brock Purdy? Mm, I don't know. Hey, that means I'm losing people. I don't know. I don't know. Okay? I don't know. Devontae better be careful at signing on the extension before he knows who the QB is going to be in three, two years. Correct. And that. But look at this. Watch this. Justin Jefferson. How about we take C.D. Lamb and not Jefferson? Say C.D. Lamb signs for $28 million over the next three years. Let's just take that. So what is that? 28. Okay. That's 84 million bucks over the next three years. Okay. So what if Devontae signs for 24 million bucks over the next three? Okay. Because he signs before them. Because he doesn't know what the market is. That's 72 million. You mean to tell me over the next three years? Devontae Smith's going to take a $13 million deduction. And the market, God knows where that could go with the wide receiver market. It could continue to escalate. And then you're looking at the highest paid players when Tyree Kills deals up or some of these other guys. It could That number could get to $25 million over the next three years he could lose. Why would he do that? Because he likes Philly? Fuck that. I don't care about that. And nor does his agent. Why would I do that? And you don't know who the quarterback's going to be. It, hey, you're praying Hurts turns it around. Okay? And if he does, to me, the extension makes more sense. I mean, to, to me, picking up the fifth-year option makes more sense for Devontae than the extension. Because why would I give money back? Why? Because I like it here? Dude, I tried to point something out to you guys. Every one of these big time wide receivers that make all the money have been traded at least two to four times. If you get into that higher rent area, you're going to be dealt. Stefan Diggs is now on his third team in five years. Devontae Smith is on his second team. Okay. Tyree Kill is on his second team. All these big-time wideouts get moved. Okay? They get moved. Lamb is in the same predicament as Smith by Sills' logic. Yeah, he's got to wait. I would take the – hey, the, yeah. Gary, why would you sign before the best player in the sport signs? When you know at the court, here, Gary, think about this. I do mean Devontae Adams. Thank you very much, Ty. Gary, you're right. Don't you see that too? So Jalen Hurts, 
was making more money on a new contract extension than Patrick Mahomes until Kansas City restructured it, right? Even the best player in the game gets passed when the market goes up when a contract gets redone. Kansas City did the right thing because the guy's the best in the sport, right? Justin Herbert was making more. Joe Burrow was making more. Jalen Hurts and Kyler Murray. Daniel Jones was making more money than Patrick Mahomes at one time until they redid the deal about a month and a half ago. Why would you let the market pass you by if you're Devontae Smith? I'm going to sign now at $22 million and Jefferson gets 30 Let's just go there. I mean, you're, you're talking significant money. You're talking $24, $25 million difference that you're giving back to the Eagles just to play with the birds? Not me. I have no interest in that. I have zero interest in that. Okay? Dick train. Oh, my God, you idiot. Stop pocketing. Pocket watching, who cares? It's the money, not you're on. Hey, how about this, kid? Go get me that Shohei Otani translator and try putting words into a sentence that makes sense. Just like your takes and your thinking process. It's all effed up. Good night. Um, Aluminum foil hat. Good night. Justin Jefferson will never win a Super Bowl. Neither did Randy Moss. Neither did Randy Moss. Okay? Bob, I like I'm well, I'm going to get to that in a minute here. Okay? Yeah, hey. Come on, Dick Train. It's not your money. It's not the point what the money is, jackass. It's why would he do it? I don't give a shit what they pay him. I don't care if they pay him or not. It's got nothing to do with it. This guy makes it seem like I give a shit about what Jeffrey Lurie's doing. Why? He wastes money before. Makes Hey, how about this? How many people think that that deal that he made with Saquon Barkley was an A-plus deal? How many people think that the Hassan Reddick deal was an A-plus deal? So AF, story of his life. AF. <laughs> okay. Crowley, why did he start late? Because Howie Roseman and the Eagles tried to buy StreamYard and we couldn't get it off on time. It was a B deal. So he, get this, here's what Dick Train thinks. The Hassan Reddick deal's a B deal. <laughs> Thank God we're not talking food or oxygen. I can't breathe for three years. <laughs> but Dick Train's all right with that. Man. Wow. I see it, Bob. I'm get I haven't even gotten to my topics because of how this day went. Okay. I got you. I'm there. Crowley goes, the deal was an F. Absolutely. Hey, as good as that deal was with Barkley, some of you guys. That Reddick deal, where's his co where's Reddick's contract extension in New York? I still have yet to see that. Three, four contracts will reset, and then a bunch of other deals will flow, just like Hertz and Lamar. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Hey, and, and Niners. Niners goes, Sills told Dick Train to type in English. Yeah, he was typing in like uh like in Hebrew or something. I couldn't understand what he was doing. I was hieroglyphics and all that. Thought I was looking at, you know, something from like the, the eclipse the other day. Is that a sun or is that a moon or is that a mountain or is that the mouth bone of an ass? I don't know. <laughs> what was that? All right. Let's see here. We're still going. We're not stopping here because of what went on. Not yet, Xander. Not yet. Okay? At the end of the day here, like you mentioned, 
in a previous podcast, if Vic Fangio can't turn this puppy around, it could be on Howie and he should be fired. You know what? I'll say this to you, Ken. I don't know if he should be fired. How about this? He should have some of his power stripped. Stop with the personnel shit. And the coaching influences. Get away from that. Hire a coach who knows the coach is in the league. Okay? Howie will never fire Roseman. That's why I'm saying don't fire him, but redefine him. Just redefine him. How he's never getting fired. He's a magician with the cap. You know what? It's funny. I wonder how many titles Howie Roseman has cost you. As much as you give him credit for winning the 17 Super Bowl, I wonder how many times over the last five years between the Wentz deal, the Doug Peterson firing, some of the bad deals. Let me show you something else before we get into the topics. So do, guys, do me a favor. Let's just talk draft here. How good of a draft guy, college drafter, do you think Howie is? Yale. Scale of one to, one to five. Howie Roseman. When it comes to college personnel, how's your top five GM, according to Steve? CZ says not good. Arthur says three. It's not awful. Two, that is. Uh, Prince thinks he's a nine out of ten. Two out of five. I said out of five, but if you want to go... Dick Train says how he's a genius. Out of 10, he thinks nine and a half. All right. Well, explain this to me. Kyle says he's a crapshoot. Thank you, Steve. Howie was one flag away from winning two in five years. I personally don't think they were ever going to win that 2022 Super Bowl. They were never going to win it. You know why? Coaching staff panicked. You didn't have the right coaches. If Doug Peterson's on the sidelines, you win it. That's a personnel decision from the front office getting in the way. Howie Roseman cost you a Super Bowl there because he didn't have the right personnel. And some of you will go like this. You really think Doug could have won it? Well, I know this. Sean Desai and hirings of Brian Johnson and decisions like that, we're not going to win it for you. Having people like Jim Schwartz, Frank Reich, and Doug Peterson on the sidelines, you're going to win. You're not going to win with what you had there. As good as Shane Steichen was, it's just not good enough. Kansas City has exceptional coaching and an exceptional quarterback. That's why they're the best. And that's the people you're gauged against. You have to have the best coaching staff and you have to have one of the top five quarterbacks, and you don't. And you don't. So as I'm going to be honest, I'm also a Georgia fan, so the last two years I was 10 out of 10, but I don't know how these boys are going to pan out. I hope nothing but the best. Well, let me show you something here. Let's go back to 2011. And this is Howie Roseman later in the draft where he's kind of positioned right now at 22. And you tell me, hey, Dick Train, get, let, let Dick Train make a grade on this. So you're sitting at 22 right now, right? And you're kind of from 15 down to 32. You're in the middle there, right? In the middle of that thing. Let's look at how he's and how he's drafted down there at the bottom end of the draft, shall we? 2011, Danny Watkins, 23. 2014, Marcus Smith, 26. 2015, Nelson Aguilar, 20. 2017, Derek Barnett, 14. 
Okay. Yell says, uh, Banner was there in 11. Okay. How he was working for him too, right? How he's been in the building since 2000, right? So pretty much the same fundamental thought process and how you look at talent on the college level when you're, when you're evaluating talent. He was in the building. He's been in the building since 2000. So Danny Watkins in 2011, number 23. 2014, Marcus Smith, 26. 2015, Nelson Aguilar, 20. 2017, Derek Barnett, 14. 2019, Andre Diller, 22nd pick. 2020, Jalen Rager, number 21. And 2023, Nolan Smith, 30. Um, how do you think they've done in the back end of the draft? Well, most of the time, good players fall to you. How do you think they've done with one, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks that you were down between 15 and 32. How do you think they've done? Half and half? Danny Watkins, Marcus Smith, Nelson Aguilar, Derek Barnett. These are first rounders. Andre Dillard, Jalen Rager, Nolan Smith. You think those are good picks? I'd put a D on that. I'd put a D on that. You can't think those are good. Hey, Sills, I bet you don't do a better job than Howie if you were the GM. First thing I would do is that I wouldn't be the capologist. Here's where you're wrong, kid. Okay? I wouldn't be the capologist. I would work more in personnel. And I would hire a brilliant capologist guy who knows how to cut deals. That's what I would do. I would know my weaknesses. And I would hire to that. You don't hire to your strengths. You hire to your weaknesses. That's what makes you a good GM. Personally, that's what makes you a great head coach. Okay? No, 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 no. See, once again, Dick Train can't listen. Was Devontae Smith drafted between 15 and... Was he drafted... Between 15 and 32. Come on, Dick Train. Was he drafted between 15 and 32? Come on, Dick Train. Okay. Listen. 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 Once again, Dick Train, I'm talking first round picks. Man, this guy can't listen. You do everything you can to make that organization look as good as it possibly can. Don't still sit there and realize in 32 years of him owning the team, he has come up short in the biggest games that matter. You're 17 and 17 in the postseason. You should have at least two to three Super Bowl wins by now. And you know what? It's because you don't allow your organization to act like the Ravens. The Ravens, since 2000, that organization has put Hall of Famers in and won Super Bowls. You know why? Because they enable people to do their gigs. And nobody gets in the way. Second best G um, Howie is the second best GM in the league. Give him a raise. And once again, I'm going to quantify that because he knows how to do the cap. I quantified it. Absolutely, I said that. Because of contract structuring, 
when it came to Jalen Hurts. But when it comes to personnel, he sucks. His record dictates it. Once again, LJ not telling the whole truth. LJ is the Adam Schiff of the National Football Show. <laughs> I mean, let's say anything. <laughs> I'm going to start calling AJ, hey, Xander, I'm going to start calling him um, Adam Shift AJ. AJ Adam Shift. <laughs> Oh man. Hey, 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 don't worry. Hey, Niner, thank you, man. Two Super Bowls in five years is pretty damn good. Completely different roster. Really. Two dude, the 17 Super Bowl was not won by Howie Roseman. It was won by that fabulous coaching job in a player who played out of his skull. All right, we have to get to a topic here. All right. I have to get to a topic. I haven't even gotten to one yet. This will take change the complexity with some of your guys here. Okay. Man, there's so much work to do on defense. There is so much work to do but would you be open to doing this? Hey, Yale, would you be open to doing this? Would you take the 22nd pick and the 53rd pick and move up to 10 and take Brock Bowers. I think he's the best player in the draft. And I think of all the players on the team, I would, um, I think he could help Hurts out more than anybody that's on that current team right now. Why do it? Jalen wouldn't even get Goddard involved or wide receiver three. Now add another weapon with Saquon? No, not the right quarterback for him. Well, you would answer your question at quarterback because if you can't have a quarterback throw for four grand and win you a Super Bowl with Brock Bowers, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Saquon Barkley, and one of the top three O lines in football, you'll never win. You'll never win with him. You're never going to win with him. But trust me when I say you're never going to win with that quarterback in Philadelphia. You're never going to win. But you would have a ready – Xander, but you would have a ready-made football team for a quarterback to step right in and win. You'd have a ready-made team. Just throw the keys to a guy who can get the ball to them and not turn the ball over. Okay? I mean, what we've seen with all the quarterback movement and what we've seen, any quarterback's tradable. The only guy that's – there's only one quarterback, I think, in pro football that's not tradable. That's the guy in KC. The rest of them are. Powers at 10 or trade for certain. Would you give the 10? Would you give the 22nd? Would that be good enough, the 22nd and the 53rd for certain? Might be good enough. Okay? Might be good enough. 
Hey, the day Dick Train, you understand that your boy's not a superstar is the day you'll understand that you're not going to win shit with that guy. And that 22 was like Rex Grossman. And let me see. Who else? Colin Kaepernick. That's all he is. He's Rex Grossman and Colin Kaepernick. Yale, do you th I wonder if Denver would go. Here's 22. Because then, get this, Yale, Denver could take the 22nd pick and move up with Chicago. And where's Denver take? Denver's at 12. Denver could give Chicago or even New England to get to the third hole. Would Bowers be there at 12, though? So Bowers will be uh, Bowers will be great, but the D, I know. I get it. I know. Why would Denver trade Sertan? Will someone tell Ty? Will someone tell Ty why Denver would trade Sertan? Why would Denver trade Patrick Sertain? Yale, correct. Who's their quarterback right now? If they started the season right now, I don't even know. Who would be their quarterback? What's the point of having a corner on your football team when you can't win games? And you don't even know who your starting quarterback is. And you're in the AFC West with Jim Harbaugh and Andy Reid now. And there's another one that Barb said. And because the Broncos are 100 years away from winning a Super Bowl. Jared Stedman is the quarterback right now for the Denver Broncos. That's why they would trade Patrick Sertan. Okay? Jared Stedman. You think he's going to compete with Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes in the AFC West? I don't. Not for the next five years. <laughs> Brian, right. Who? Okay, who? He could. It's the Anna. <laughs> Jaron Jones, fourth round. Play You're not doing dick with guys like that. Last time they were good, Vic was the head coach. Vic drafted him too. And former Patriot quarterback, of course, because, you know, guys like um, Colin Coward, Say that Belichick didn't know quarterbacks, and yet Stedman's going to be a starting quarterback. Rise of right now in Denver. Um, Mac Jones has started games. Uh, what's his name? Jacoby Brissett has started games. Tom Brady, Garoppolo, Matt Castle won a division. I'll tell you this. Bill Belichick has drafted more quarterbacks that played and won games than any quarterback in the NFL currently today. There's nobody that has drafted more quarterbacks that have started games. And he's got six Super Bowl titles. That's a fact. Okay? Jimmy G even took a team to a Super Bowl. Jimmy G took a team to a Super Bowl. Belichick drafted. Matt Castle won a division title in Kansas City in 11 games in New England. Didn't even start a game at USC, and he still drafted him. Tom Brady, don't really have to say anything. Jacoby Brissett started ball games in Indianapolis and actually won a ton of games. Mac Jones 
Finished runner-up in the rookie of the year. Started games. Is he great? No, but he started. I mean, I got and they got Jared Stenham now, who's the starting quarterback as of today in Denver. You got six dudes that he drafted that have started ball games in the league. Name me another coach who's done that. Who? Name me another guy. There's my guy, Mark Holmes. Mark, let's say this to you here. Hey, by the way, let me say something to Mark. Been watching his stuff. He's been doing a great job. We really appreciate him being part of this whole thing. Hey, Mark, let me say this to you about Michael Parsons. Hey, dude, if the guy's a headache, how about this, Mark? If Michael Parsons is a headache and the Cowboy organization has a tr- has trouble with him, learn to get over yourself and coach him. Charles Haley wasn't easy to coach. Jimmy coached him. Michael Irvin wasn't easy to coach, but he coached him. And if that guy has, and there's somebody in the organization that has an ass with him, coach him. That's what good organizations do. They coach problem childs like Aaron Hernandez. And they don't bitch and moan and cry about it. Okay? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Andy's quarterback wash-ups end up being coaches. Yes, they do. Yeah, Yes, they do. All right, let's do this here. Has Jordan Davis, Charles Haley was a headache. Jimmy had the balance scale. You're a dick? Okay. You're a dick. You don't want to practice. You say obnoxious things in the locker room. Fair enough. You get me two sacks and six tackles a game. That's going to go like this. I'm okay with it. I don't give a shit if you're a headache. Like, look at A.J. Owens. Okay? A.J. Owens. Is the podcast they're upset with? Hey. Get this. A.J. Owens, he gets 1,300 yards a year and 95 catches and 8 to 10 touchdowns. I'm going to live with his bullshit because he's productive. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I am. Why do the 49ers and Cowboy fans love Philly media? (laughs) <laughs> oh, you guys are just, Dan, don't you get me started about Super Bowl prep. McMullen would have, would have you believe that Vic worked with the offense to prep the KCD. Mark Holmes is Jerry Jones's next wife. <laughs> Randy Gregory. I can't understand, but Micah, I can understand, but Micah, Hey, man, Micah Parsons, here's the problem that here, and I don't know if Mark was part of this or not, but here's what happened with Micah Parsons. They saw that guy burst onto the scene, and you know what everyone started doing, all the Cowboy media people? Oh, my God, he's the best thing I've ever seen. Holy shit, this guy's better than Lawrence Taylor. And I'm like, you might want to pump the brakes on that. Guy's not Lawrence Taylor. But you got cowboy media all over the country building that guy up. And get this when he doesn't live up to the hype, everyone looks at him as a disappointment. Why are you disappointed in Micah Parsons? Did you, what, why are you, why are you upset? 
with Micah Parsons. You know why you're upset? You built this guy. Hey, but hey, Eagle fans are building Jalen Hurts up to be the next superstar, and he's not. And he's not. Cowboy fans are notorious for this. They'll build a guy up. Like, look at CeeDee Lamb. How many people truly believe that CeeDee Lamb is better than Devontae Smith? I don't. I think if C.D. Lamb is in Cincinnati, he's T. Higgins. He's T. Higgins. But because he plays in Dallas, he's Michael Irvin or Des Bryant. Absolutely, Barb. Dak Prescott is the great example of Cowboy fans building a guy up into being Troy Aikman. And he's not. Troy Aikman is a three-time Super Bowl champion quarterback. But if you listen to Jerry, Jerry thinks Tony Romo is the best quarterback to ever play in Dallas. If Jalen's not, then I guess we do. We go with Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee? If I see Tanner McKee taking snaps for the Eagles... Everyone should be fired. Everyone. And the owner should sell the team. Sills, the solution to the problem is moving one of our wide receivers for picks so we can retool for the 34 switch. It has nothing to do with their skill. The equity that you would get in the trade, plus the savings in cash, all of that. But you'd have to eat a big cap hit. You'd have to eat a big cap hit. Okay? You would. I mean, and and, and Marco's like this, 1749 and 12 TDs. Yeah. Hey, Mark, congratulations. You're in the land of A.J. Brown. It didn't mean dick. You got rolled by the Packers, and the Eagles got rolled by the Bucks. What did it get you? Nothing. Nothing. And he's a single target. Michael Gallup blew. Your two and three sucked. He got every single one of the targets almost at CeeDee Lamb. And it was so predictable, the Packers annihilated him. I mean, I think C.D. Lamb, I think he's a good ball player. I wouldn't put him in the, the upper echelon of top flight wideouts. I just wouldn't. He, he came on. You know why he came on? Hey, you know why he came on? Hey, by the way, I don't think Mark understands this, too. So, Mark, let me tell you about your top flight guy you're going to pay $28 million to. So, Stefan Diggs is going on his third team. Devontae Adams is on two. Tyree Kills on two. Um, who else makes big money? A.J. Brown will be on his second after next year. What do these guys all have in common? $25 million and no Super Bowls. And Tyree Kill didn't get paid big money when he won his first Super Bowl. They threw him out of the room and threw him out of the club because he wanted money. And they went on to win two more. Get this. Yell goes, I'll take Cheetah. That's not what Kansas City said. They said, you can have Miami. You go pay him. And you got Jalen Waddle. And you can't do shit with him. And every time you get into a game with a physical football team, what happens? The Dolphins get run over. He has growing up to do. And if he does, watch out. Um, The problem with what Mark is saying about the Cowboys, like when we had Tony Casillas on the other day, as a player in Dallas, you can't grow up because you have no authority leader in the locker room. You see, when, when Coach Johnson was there, 
there was one head rooster in charge. It wasn't Jerry. It was Jimmy. That's the guy you answered to. And you grew because of tough coaching. There's not tough coaching in Dallas. It's laid back coaching. Because they don't answer to the head coach. They answer to the owner who has two radio shows a week and goes on and tells everybody how bad his coach or his quarterback isn't playing. Players in the locker room goes like this. Well, who's in charge? Oh, the owner. Okay. The vocal owner is in charge. And it's why the Cowboys for 30 years, and as long as Jerry Jones is the general manager of the Dallas Cowboys, they'll never win. They will never win. They have not been able to duplicate the things that Jimmy did. Even with the great players that they've drafted, what's been the one common denominator in Dallas in the last 30 years? It's Jerry running the team. He's changed everything. Coaches, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, O-line, defense. Overpaid, overhyped, and he can't get out of the first round. Why? Because it's his culture. Cowboys don't have a winning culture. They just don't have a winning culture. And by the way, that's... That's not me talking. That's the results talking. I mean, Jerry Jones is a phenomenal businessman for the league and has done, he's P.T. Barnum and he's Vince McMahon. He's completely that. But he's no Al Davis. Yale says the Eagles have been more successful over the last 20 years. Yale, can I make a comparison to you? This is how I see the Eagles in the last 25 years compared to the Cowboys. It reminds me of what the Red Sox have done to the Yankees in the last 25 years. The Red Sox have been a better organization, have gone to more World Series. Because why? Dale Webstein, Dave Dombrowski, uh, Larry Lacchino. They've had front office people in that building. And what else has been the difference? The boss died. It's one of the things that's made the Lakers different. Jeannie Buss is not Dr. Buss. It, it, there's a reason. I mean, the Red Sox have taken over the Yankees in the last 25 years. Al Davis's problems were that the NFL kept him in courtrooms because when Al Davis was just running his team, they had the highest win percentage of any football team in the National Football League for decades. He was a revolutionary. He's a maverick. But, and by the way, now everybody holds communities hostage for new stadiums because of what Al Davis did. I mean, it starts with management and people who know when to get the hell out of the way. But Prince, you don't have to worry about Dallas. Their fans are the greatest fans in the world from February until September. They win the offseason. They win the expectations wars. But when the season starts, reality hits. And then they turn their hat inside out for another team that they root for. Because they know, quite frankly, they're not going anywhere. The Cowboys have become the Cubs before the Cubs won the World Series. We'll get them next year. I mean... Yep. After a while, when you keep getting punched in the face, 
You have to duck, don't you? The Cowboys keep getting punched in the face. And they don't duck. Because you know why? They got the same mentality that Howie has. They think their process is gold. Come to Philly, where we sign quarterbacks for being one-year wonders, and we have one of the best cameramen in Sirianni. (laughs) I don't know why you guys sign these quarterbacks the way you do. I think it's absurd, and I think it's ridiculous the way you sign both Wentz and Jalen Hurts to these contracts, and you jumped ahead of yourself because, you know, I get it, the cap and all that, trying to get ahead with the cap. But when you're talking about franchise quarterbacks, you guys have over, hey, Jalen Hurts is as overhyped. Hey, Brian, Jalen Hurts is as overhyped as Michael Parsons is. He's not a franchise quarterback. Michael Parsons is not Lawrence Taylor. Not. By the way, Lamar Jackson, is that style going to win a Super Bowl? I, I don't believe so. I just don't. I don't believe so. Like to watch him. Watching Jalen and watching Lamar is like watching a better version of Michael Vick. Steve goes, Jalen Hurts is not overhyped. And this is what makes me get upset about Steve. His rookie year, his 22 year and last year, He's not overhyped. Where in the world do you see one thing that's consistent with that take that he just made? When he's ne- the quarterback in Philly's never been consistent. How do you have that take? I mean, every quarterback is overhyped except Mahomes? No. I think Joe Burrow's a damn good-looking passer. He can win from the pocket. But his problem is health. See, every quarterback has an issue. The guy in Buffalo, it's brains. Stupid moves. He still wins. It's crazy. The only only thing you guys say to this about Josh Allen and how you guys talk about Josh Allen with Jacob or uh, with uh, Jalen, Guy's got the same winning percentage, and he leads the league in turnovers, and he's won four straight AFC East titles. Yet he still wins. Jalen's got to a Super Bowl. That's not the metric on what makes a great quarterback. It's winning them and being consistent. Jalen's had three straight trips to the playoffs. Well, I'll ask you one more. Hey, get this. Let me think. So did Mark Sanchez. Arthur, you want to hear something else? I think Mark Sanchez made it to three straight AFC championship games. May have been two. Am I right, Yale? Mark Sanchez made it to three straight AFC championship games. So Jalen's as good as Mark Sanchez? For every single time you tell me about Jalen three playoffs, I'll give you Mark Sanchez. He did the same shit Jalen did. He got the three straight AFC title games. What happened? What happened? Blew that up, didn't we? Hey, blew that up. Eagles had top D. Uh, okay. Now here we go with the excuses on Sanchez. So it was a great topic. Your Howie Swallows was pride gives us. 
gives up the draft and lets his coaches have control, this will never change. Poorly run business can have a great year like 17 and 22. Absolutely. And then get this, Bob, if you, if you're a stockbroker and you look at the stock of the uh, Eagles, would you say it's a stable stock or would you say it's a volatile stock? What would you say that stock would be? Jalen was a leader. I must have missed that in the last seven games of the year, Arthur. I must have missed that. He was a tomato can. So you think winning you think inside of winning a Super Bowl and then going to four wins and firing your Super Bowl coach, then getting back to a Super Bowl is not volatile, but stable. Hmm. So you don't see the stock going up and down. That that's stable. Leadership is overrated. It sure was last year, wasn't it? Not one of you guys showed it. Line chart is trending upwards. You thought last year was trending upwards? Where? The stock went like this last year, Yale. Here's the stock of the 2023 Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> that they look like true social. <laughs> that thing looked like truth social. <laughs> or better yet, hey, I'll, I'll, here, here's one better, right, Xander? Here's a 2023 stock for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> like StreamYard. <laughs> 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 Right? I guarantee when you wake up in the morning, that StreamYard stock's not going to be trending in a good place. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you might want to look at that thing for a little bit, right? So it's just like the stock market, how he makes money. If you're up and down because his clients keep buying every season. Absolutely true, Bob. That's a great take. You know how Big Seals used to make money as a broker? He's a quiet leader. <laughs> you know how you know how I used to make money? You call up a guy and here was my stock pitch. Here was here here was my stock pitch to people. I made quite a bit of money. I worked at Bear Stearns. Hey, this is Dan Cilio. How you doing, my friend? Yeah, listen, and I'll just give you waste management. I'll go like, you know, one of the greatest stocks that we invest in. We don't really invest in a lot of people like Lynch does or Shearson Lehman. Those guys are flipping in and out of stocks. We pick three or four stocks a year. It's why we never had a losing quarter in 75 years of the market. And for Bear Stearns being on where we look at our clients and say, we have a deal here that's going to at least make you between six to 14 fold. Guy would go, what's the stock? I go, it's waste management. You can't, you have to throw your trash out. It's one of the most safest. Also, if you want to parlay that up with Sarah Lee, um, you can. And if you want, you can also add Trojan rubber. And he goes, Trojan rubber, Sarah Lee and waste management. I go, yeah. You got the safe one, you got a little volatile one, and you got one that's going to go through the roof and probably give you 18-fold. Why would you know this? He goes, well, because here at Bear Stearns, we have insight and we don't do a lot of trading. The CDC is going to come out and say that um, the AIDS epidemic is going to be a national and worldwide thing, and Trojan stock is going to trade at $3.38 this week, and next week it could get to as high as $118 a a stock. And that's something that I would think you'd be interested in a 14 fold increase. 
your portfolio goes up, plus you're safe on um, Intel Z if you want to add. You can go there. The guy will go like this. How do you know this information? We only trade three or four stocks a year. That's why we've never had a losing quarter. <laughs> and, hey, Yale goes insider. Well, that's why the – hey, Yale, that's why Bear Stearns ain't around anymore. You ever hear of Michael Milken? Series, you got your Series 7? Of course I do. It's not updated, but I, of course, uh, Merrill Lynch helped me get it. And then I finished it up with Bear Stearns. Yeah, I got a Series 7. I passed the Series 7, yes. And then I got into ac acquisitions and mergers with Nabisco. And we did the Sarah Lee Nabisco uh, merger. And I did it with Ace Greenman. Ace Greenberg, who ran. And it was that was Trump's guy. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Milken. Met him. Hey, how would you like to be Michael Milken? The guy who was really the Gordon Gecko. Get this, Xander. Guy goes to jail and has to pay a fine of $1 billion to his investors. Problem was, he made six. So when he got out, he's sitting in the can. He gets out, he's richer. <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> hey, give me four years. My stocks go up and I'm out richer. I'm in. With the fire of Doug Peterson, these front office is set the team back. We're truly paying for it. It's just too volatile. You don't lose in the market until you sell. Well, well, Bob, this is how you actually, yeah, this is how you make money. You call your client up. I like let's just say a stock is 10 grand. I get fifteen hundred dollars trading the stock, and I get fifteen hundred dollars when you leave the trade. I make three grand off that. Now, a lot of these fiduciary companies like Fisher. They don't take that any longer. But back in the day when you worked at Stearns or Shearson Lehman and you worked at um, um, Merrill Lynch, you got 15 in, 15 out. That was your net number. So if it's 100 grand, think about this. You get 15,000 in, $15,000 out. You make $30,000 on that exchange. And if it's a million dollar deal, I get $150,000 and then another $150,000 when you trade the stock, I get 300 grand on that. I mean, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, that's how you make your money. That's why a lot of people don't like to do any trades less than 10 grand. What's the point? So, and I, and I look at NFL teams like that. Xander's probably like, I didn't think this guy was this smart. <laughs> uh, you were in a mortgage business. Yeah, you're talking Fannie Mae and um, those – Bill Clinton destroyed the Fannie Mae business by giving extended loans on homes that people couldn't afford. And when Fannie Mae crashed, it destroyed the entire economic market. And that's why those banks – when Obama went in and he went into the White House, it was because of Clinton. Clinton had bankrupt the entire mortgage industry because they were giving loans to people who could not pay for homes and people were throwing their keys on the, on the uh, floor and just leaving because there was no way of getting out from under the mortgage. Freddie Mac. Absolutely. Freddie Mac and uh, Fannie Mae destroyed the um, real estate business. And many of those banks, when Obama went into the white house, Bush too, he didn't help. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why Howie, extends the risk, buys his cost basis, goes down, and still hits big if they go on a run. Yeah, it's, it's he 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 kind of runs it like that, like a, like he's a stockbroker. He really does. And I see a lot of the same characteristics. Okay? So imagine playing for Nick Chiriani as your coach. I would hate that. Okay. Seals, do you have to put a lot of money down in the beginning of stocks? No. Uh, no, you can actually go on those trader sites now, spend as much as a hundred bucks. 
You know, you want to hear this? Jimmy Johnson makes more money trading. What's that? What's that one site you can go on? Jimmy makes $5 million a year trading stocks. He makes more money doing that than he does working at Fox. It's a true statement. Stay. What's up, my friend? What's up? Um, I got to take a break. I'm going to take a break here. And we'll take a break. Um, we're coming up to the three o'clock hour. I, di I didn't want to take as many breaks. But um, we posted some stuff that's on the website, too. I got another topic that I'm going to hit here. Okay? Um, we'll, we'll come back out. We'll hit the topic. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz & Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Mike Sales National Football Show. Please hit the like button. We appreciate everybody's patience with us here. StreamYard had some issues. We'll be back to normal tomorrow. Um, 3.30, Steve Tasker will join us. Part of the broadcast team for the Buffalo Bills, former eight-time Pro Bowler seven-time first-team All-Pro will join us, and Mark Farzetta will join us at 4.30. That will be tomorrow, so we'll be back on track here a little bit here tomorrow. I like how everybody's all of a sudden now jumping on. First, do you notice this, Xander? I was the first guy to come out and say Edger and Cooper. Now everyone loves him. I was the first guy to come out and say Chop Robinson. Now everybody in Philly loves him. I'm glad they listen. I'm very proud to give content to people. I'm good with Chop Robinson being that 22nd pick. I think he'd be a great addition. He could play the run, and I think he's a ball player. Okay? Dan, you will never be normal. Normal? That's like being called common. I don't want to be. Hey, you know, you know what, Brian? It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that. 
Because people always go like this. Sales, do you think you're the best? Like Angelo says, do you think you're the best in sports broadcasting? No. I'm unique. And that's what Hurts used to be. He's not unique anymore. He's common. And he played like a common quarterback last year. He was a one of in 22. Now he's common. And the more he stays in that common room, the less he'll win. If I see that guy get, by the way, it's almost too late now. He's not going to get any healthier. Okay. Xander's like 100% accurate. I'm, I'm, I'm not the best. I'm one of. That's what sells. People sounding like Stevie Wonder or Kendrick Lamar. That doesn't sell. What sells is unique. Are you unique? It doesn't matter what the profession is. People are attracted to unique. Okay? Unique. That's what made Hertz unique in 22. He's common now. Hey, boss, whatever happened to Tone? Um, I don't know. What happens to people in any business? Reorganiz- reorganizing? Um, why don't you ask the same question about the WIP guys? They're in bankruptcy. I don't know. Do you call them asking them why Odyssey's in bankruptcy? Part of my business. And if you're not prepared for that, you shouldn't be in it. Because it's not for the faint of heart. I think Xander's going to have a heart attack every day he comes. <laughs> I think he's going to have a heart attack every day he turns my show on. It's part of being in the business, man. It's also what keeps you alive. Okay? And personally, I've been in Tone's boots many times. Part of the business, my friends. It's not uncommon. Okay, right, shit happens. Love the kid. Xander loves him. Big Joe loves him. We all do. What's that got to do with business? No hard feelings. Actually, great feelings. I don't know why people are so shocked that the broadcast business is as intense as a sports Business like Howie. Why did you guys suck last year? Why did you fire Sean Desai? Why did you fire Brian Johnson? What happened to them? Well, they didn't perform. Really? Well, Brian Johnson did beat Vic Fangio, and you hired the guy he beat. I mean, Brian Johnson organized an offense to beat Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. And Kansas City was fully healthy. Sean Desai was the defensive coordinator that stopped Patrick Mahomes. Why'd you fire him? Brian Johnson and Sean Desai were coordinators that beat Josh Allen and Dak. Why'd you fire him? No answers? Oh. I'll tell you this. You guys, ask, it's, it's it's funny you asked me about tone because I'll ask you about well, why did you fire Brian Johnson and Sean Desai again? And why do you guys keep saying they sucked when they beat? So let me get this right. Sean Desai and Brian Johnson beat Mahomes, Stafford, Mayfield, Allen, 
Dak. Why'd you beat him? Why, why'd you fire him? Why'd you fire those coaches that beat the reigning Super Bowl back-to-back -back champion, beat Stafford, a Super Bowl champion, You beat Mayfield, Josh Allen, Dak Prescott. I mean, what happened? Because they lost two games? And you wanted someone to blame. Well, shit happens. How could you fire a guy to beat the reigning Super Bowl champion as your offensive coordinator and your defensive coordinator? How could you fire that? You want to hear this? You beat, you fired a guy, two guys that beat the Super Bowl MVP, Josh Allen, who finished third in the MVP voting, Dak, who finished fourth in the MVP voting. Stafford, who finished seventh, and you fired those men. Why? Twiz, shit happens. Tell you this, Brian Johnson being fired for beating Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Did they beat Kirk Cousins too? See, some of these people are in here going like this. Jalen Hurts beat those guys. Oh, but Jalen Hurts. And no, but the coaches lost to Drew Locke and Tyrod Taylor and Kyler Murray. Those were the coaches. But Jalen beat those other guys. That's a load of shit. Can't have it both ways. So you beat Kirk Cousins, too. He just got a brand new $200 million contract. Oh, I see. You guys make your excuses when he sucks, but when he's good, it's him. It's the only place in America that covers for a quarterback is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm shocked by that. I really am. I thought you'd hold that guy more accountable, but you don't make more excuses for him. Did you guys make these excuses? For Wentz, wonder why you're making all these excuses for Hurts. Guy's a one-year wonder. And get this, that's not an opinion. That's what his football bubblegum card says. So you think the back of his the back of his football bubblegum card is lying? You know what's funny? Jalen Hurts has been to playoffs three times in a row. And like I said, Mark Sanchez has two. He actually went to three conference title games in a row. Congratulations. He's Mark Sanchez. <laughs> oh, LJ goes, dumbest shit I've ever heard. Yet he gives old Jalen the credit for going to three straight playoff games. And yet... Mark Sanchez, too. Mark Sanchez went to three straight AFC championship games. But that's dumb shit. What's your... Rex Grossman went to a Super Bowl. He stunk, too. Colin Kaepernick was good, but, I mean... The back of Jalen Hurts' bubblegum card. Okay? The back of his bubblegum card tells you who he is. I don't have to tell you. Read it. Philly D goes, made the playoffs three years in a row. That's not a one-hit wonder. <laughs> Neither was Mark Sanchez. Um, I like the kid from Duke. He could be down there. I would say that um, probably between 20 and 30. He'll be in there somewhere. Okay.
Okay. Let's get to the other topic here. No, you're right, Brian. Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than Dan Marino. Dude, the only way Jalen Hurts will make it to the Pro Football Hall of Fame is if someone buys him a ticket. <laughs> That's the only way he's going to the Hall of Fame. I know, Brian. I'm kidding. <coughs> <coughs> You see what I'm talking about, Xander? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jalen Hurts. Hey, Jalen. I saw Jalen Hurts at the Hall of Fame. What was he doing? Cleaning it? <laughs> what was he doing? Cleaning it or selling hats? What could he possibly have been doing in Canton? He's either cleaning it, selling hats, or he's selling Philadelphia jerseys. Kelly Green's, by the way, I hope. <laughs> oh, man. Anyone can pull a name out of his hat. Jalen won games for us. Jalen's, Jalen Hurts' football card tells you who he is. That's not a great football card for a starting quarterback in the National Football League. He goes from being an MVP candidate to having the second most turnovers in the sport. It, Josh Allen leads the NFL in turnovers every year and wins his conference or wins his division every year. Every year. Doesn't really matter. He's just got to cut them turnovers down. What does Jalen have to do? Play better. Think about that. Hey, Xander, I think we nailed it here. Think about this. Josh Allen just has to pull back on the turnovers. Jalen Hurts has to play better. <laughs> oh, my God. That's all he has to do. He's got to just turn, take the turn because he wins division titles. He wins 12 to 13 games every year. He plays against the best conference quarterbacks in the NFL every year. Your guy loses the bums. He loses to Patrick Mahomes. Okay? And he does it by himself. You have to have an all-pro team around the kid. Come on, man. This argument is boring and weak for me. And it's unbecoming of me. I sound like some people that repeat themselves, and I'm sick of it. You know what the hell's going on. This is unbecoming of me to even have a conversation that Jalen Hurts is in Josh Allen's league. It's unbecoming. Okay? Let's move on. How many people look at Jordan Davis? Has Jordan Davis been good? Has he been exceptional or has he been disappointing? What do you think Jordan Davis has been? Where are those picks? Here we go. Steve says he is average now. Average. Okay. 13th pick in the draft. Middle of the road so far. So you're saying, I would assume, middle of the road, twist, average. Okay? There's two averages. Okay? Yeah. Jordan Davis, has he been great? Good, average, Disappointing. Swaggy says disappointing. Bob, disappointing is too strong, below average. Okay. Bust. Okay at best. All right. I think we got enough. So, so far we have bust. 
and a ton of averages. Should the Philadelphia Eagles take the 50th pick, hedge their bets, and draft a defensive tackle at that pick? I don't think you can go into the year with two things, relying on Nicobe Dean and relying on Jordan Davis. It's it's a remedy for a disaster. They have failed two years in a row. You're going to do it again? How is that smart football? Are you really going to go into the year once again when Nicobe Dean has a starter who he's penciled in to be the starter? And Jordan Davis as your starter, when both of these guys have been disappointments since they've been Philadelphia Eagles. Or do you think Jalen Carter deserves somebody better? You're you're gonna play Milton Williams on the perimeter now in the five technique. So you can't use him next to Jalen Carter. It's it's it, greasy. It's the Packers, September sixth in Brazil. Defensive tackles weak this year. Okay, make a trade for one. You got it. You can't go into the game plan with no depth. Who's your depth? You don't have Fletcher Cox to lean on anymore. You 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 do not have Fletcher Cox. So it would be a waste? A waste of what? What's more, a waste of the pick if Davis plays well? Or is it more of a risk to rely on a guy who hasn't played up to his ability in three years or two years since he's been here? What's more of a risk? You're caught in a position here. You got to do something. You can, here, you cannot go in to the NFL season thinking that you're going to be a competitive football team. And by the way, once again, you might be competitive in that shitty NFC and win 10, 11 games. But when you play real teams, you'll be murdered. And your coaching's not good enough. And your quarterback's not good enough. It's fool's gold, the NFC. It's total fool's gold. Remember something. Brady had to go to the NFC to win a Super Bowl, and he did it in one year. And he did it in a pandemic year. And he did it over Zoom. He did it over Zoom. <laughs> Brady won a Super Bowl over Zoom. That's how crazy that is. So Sweat, the DT from Texas. The DUI is a Howie pick. I'm not taking a defensive tackle in the first round. Not again. That's not what I'm saying to do there. That pick's got to be coveted for positions of total need. Um, Eagles, it, it, Eagles got screwed, I'm thinking, with the Packers' so-called home matchup. Defense going to have their hands full and had their hands on a, heads on a swivel. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're saying a fourth-round pick, Twiz? The fourth round pick at defensive tackle. That's is that the one they got from the Steelers? I think that's the, the 120 is the one they got from the Steelers, right? I think that's the Steeler pick. Bob says, Sills, what would Philly get if Smitty was put on the market during the draft? Arizona's 27th.
35th, 66th, or Carolina's 30. That's not enough for me to get rid of Devontae Smith. I'm not doing that. I'd get rid of A.J. Brown before I do that. I'm not doing I'm not. I'm not getting rid of Devontae Smith. That guy is part of my future. A.J. Brown is not. Jordan Malad is part of my future. Landon Dickerson's part of my future. Cam Jurgens is part of my future. Steen's part of my future. Lane's part of my future. Barkley's not part of my future. Hurts, I don't know yet. Goddard is clearly not part of my future. I've been saying trade this guy's ass for a year now. He's hurt all the time. It's time to move off him. On defense, Sweat is part of my future. Carter's part of my future. Davis is not. Your left defensive end, I don't know who's playing it. Milton Williams, I guess he's part of my future. I haven't seen him play a five technique. Bryce Huff, I don't know. Can he play three downs? He's never so far. Kobe Dean is not part of my future. Devin White is not part of my future. Nolan Smith is not part of my future. Your two corners are not part of my future. Gardner Johnson, kind of. Blankenship, maybe. There's very few guys on that team that are part of my future. Most of them are on offense. You know, Jeff Kerr said something on Birds 365 that's important. You know what it is? How he doesn't draft and build teams for stability. He doesn't. It's a makeup that they've had since he's been there. And, 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 and fitness, this goes right into what Xander said. And you're right, and so is he. Sills, since how we can't draft defensive players, why don't we – just use our picks and trade for players that are on a rookie contract and already proven fitness. Every time I bring that up to trade the 22nd pick and the 50th pick or the 53rd pick and maybe 161 for Patrick Sertain, people go, let me have the picks. Why? When you can't pick. And I showed you, look at the history fitness. Look at the history that you have picking between 15 and 32. Just look at the history of what you have down there. It's not very good. This is as an organization, 2011, Danny Hawkins or Danny Watkins, Marcus Smith, 2014, Nelson Aguilar, 15, Derek Barnett, 17, 2019, Andre Dillard, 2020, Jalen Rager, and then Nolan Smith. Between 15 and 32, when you pick in the first round, you're terrible. Again, that's not an opinion. Those are the people you took. Seals, I'd rather trade for positions I know I can't draft. I'd, I'd rather trade for, yes, Kyle. That's what he, but Kyle, remember this. Watch this, Kyle. Look at the money he pays on positions he can't draft. $25 million for your wide receiver and A.J. Brown. $15 million for uh, Hassan Reddick. 18 or 17 8 for Bryce Huff. Edge rushers and receivers. Corners can't draft. 14 million for Slay, 12 million for Bradbury. And what becomes the problem with that? You become in a revolving cycle. You get into a revolving cycle where you're you're losing the equity of the rookie contract. The Eagles don't take advantage of rookie contracts. They didn't even take advantage fully of the Jalen Hurts rookie contract. Well, they kind of did. I'll take that back. They kind of did. They did. They kind of, yeah, they, they, they did. He was on that deal last year, but not really because the sign-up bonus was prorated. 
And it screws up the fact that you don't get the equity. I, I, I've i said this three to four times to you. The Jalen Rager loss is gargantuan financially. This year, you'll pay $65 million in total equity on the A.J. Brown acquis acqui acquisition, right? 25, 25, 25. Okay? It's like 75 million. Paid $75 million for three years. And if you don't win a Super Bowl, it's a complete waste of money. Where if you were on a rookie deal, say you hit on a wide receiver like, who's, who's an average wide out that we consider pretty good? T. Higgins. Say you hit on T. Higgins. You'd been okay with T. Higgins and Devontae, right? If your quarterback's worth a shit. But what did you have? Both guys on rookie deals making a million nine instead of making one guy 25 million and another guy you got to worry about paying another 20. You lose complete equity, which means you're taking money away from your defense. That's how the Eagles are in this position. Cowboys aren't in a very good position either because they got to pay Dak, CD, Micah. I think one of those guys is out. I think one of those dudes is completely out. And 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 see what Sam brings up? They got that kid from Wake Forest in the third round, Sam. Then they get Puka Nakua, who's not a first rounder, I think in the third. And these guys are pro bowlers. And you're not paying first round equity for them. And they got 11 picks this year. The Rams are trending up. They're trending up even without Aaron Donald. And then get this, Aaron Donald retires. You don't have that $30 million salary tag hanging around your cap, which gives you more structural freedom in your salary cap to go and make more moves offensively and defensively. Look, if you got a quarterback who can win you Super Bowls, and Matthew Stafford's proved he can. Like, nobody would say Matthew Stafford is Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. But he won a Super Bowl. I mean, he he and Kirk Cousins are a lot alike. Guy had one win in Detroit. He's got an under 500. You know, Kirk Cousins has a better record as a starting quarterback in the NFL than what Matthew Stafford does. Matthew Stafford is under 500 still in the NFL. Still. He's not going to the Hall of Fame. Not on your life. <laughs> Absolutely not. Big Sills, how would you rank the Eagles' top 30 visits? Pretty good so far. I like the guys that they're bringing in. They're addressing areas of the football team. Um, I like what they're doing. I think they're addressing it. I think that's got a lot to do with Clint Hurt and with Vic and the type of guys that they're bringing in. They got a pretty good coaching staff on that side of the ball this year. Look, I, I and I say this about Vic. He hasn't, there's nothing on his resume that makes me go like this, that he's a superstar defensive coordinator. But he's been around the game, and he knows profiles of what kind of player is going to be a good ball player. And I go what Dave Wanstead said about him when Dave said, hey, it's not going to be schematically why this thing fails. It's going to be because they don't have the personnel. And I completely agree with that. Sales, so got to ask ourselves, how many teams in the NFL are mismanaged as the Eagles? You know what's funny, Sam? I don't know if it's mismanaged. I just think it's micromanaged. Does that make sense? I don't know if it's – I don't think the Eagles – I, I, you know, I give them a lot of shit. I don't think they're mismanaged. I think they're micromanaged. You know? I just think they're micromanaged. To where a point where you're like, you know, the Rager pick costs Eagles money and time. Absolutely, Taylor. At, 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 com completely true. 
Okay, micromanages, mismanage. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> where you'll see small penises, usually it's a gator. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, senor, he must be a gator then. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, hey, senor, has to be a gator. Has to be a gator here, right? All right. Hey, man, you guys, a lot of fun. And by the way, after this chaotic day today, we thank you so much. We have a lot of fun with one another. And I thank you guys. And, you know, sometimes I know I'm a penis, as J J uh, Xander would say, probably more so than I need to be. I thank you for tolerating me at times. Okay. But we appreciate it today, really. StreamYard was down. We were kind of knocked off our game a little bit here today. It'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Steve Tasker from the Buffalo Bills, seven-time, eight-time Pro Bowler will be with us. That'll be tomorrow at 3.30. We'll get Mark Farzetta on with us tomorrow as well. Guys, thank you so much. Please hit the like button. Till tomorrow, a hey, Big Joe, Xander, two to six, and we'll see you on the, on the flip side.